Hey guys, so it's that time of the month where I go through replays of the top ranked players on Dueling Book and see what deck they're playing and their win percentages, and this one was a bit exciting to do since it is post February banlist and after the release of Grand Creators. So if we take a look at what the top 25 ranked players were playing, where each player contributed roughly 20 matches each, this is the breakdown with a total of 495 matches included. Now it's not exactly 500 matches because I had to exclude replays if they involved a single game instead of a match, or if the match concluded before any card was played. Also keep in mind that shortly after a ban list where the dueling book points reset, you do tend to see a lot more variety among the top ranked, as you can tell with this pie chart. Anyways, you see that Prank Kids, now with the Brave Token Engine, was actually the most played deck among the top 25 players. Then this was followed by Sword Soul, which has been number 1 for the past couple of months. And next we have Eldritch Variance, which of course, with the release of Skill Drain on the new list, people expected a lot of play from this deck. And then there's Virtual World, which is another deck that takes advantage of the Brave Token Engine. And next we have Phantom Knight. Surprisingly, this deck was not represented as much among the top ranked players, despite it being the clear favorite to be number one in the poll that I put up a few days ago. This was followed by Dogmatica Invoked, a classic, and a surprising number of Ad Ignister for this month. We then have a ton of decks that contributed 20 matches each, first with Sky Striker, which I thought would be a bit higher than this. And then Dragon Link can't count them out since I'm sure the release of Destrudo and maybe even Snow can help them out. And then we have Drytron still, despite the recent ban of Eva, still is viable of course. And next we have Heroes, and this is actually my good friend Drew, who you may have seen his profile before on Gabe Vargas and Team Sam's channel for topping the Remote Duel Extravaganza with this deck a while back. Next we have Medulce, and you know, I used to see this deck among the top 25 ranked a lot back when I first did these analyses a year ago, and there was this long period where they just were not present anymore, but looks like it finally made a return. And next is Thunder Dragon, which is really cool, and the player that contributed 20 matches for this is actually Thunder Theory, who you should totally check out on YouTube if you want to improve as a competitive player, and I'll have his channel linked down below. And then we have Dino still kicking around with that one misc, and finally some matches in the other section, which included decks like Tri Brigade, Fluffle Despia, and Fluanderese. Now let's compare this breakdown to last month's meta-analysis, which was before the ban list, and you saw that Sword Soul took up almost half of the representation. So for February, we do have more diversity for now, but as I said earlier, the early days of post list on Dueling Book is a bit wild, and after some time, we'll probably start seeing the same few decks. Tribrigate Liralisk was a big chunk of the pie last month as well, and they did lose some key cards on the recent ban list, but Tribrigate is still a strong deck, so it was surprising to see hardly any representation at all among the top 25 players this month, and the rest, you see pretty similar decks as this month. So our top 25 players won 70% of the matches, and this is a bit lower than usual since it's the start of the format, whereas once you're deep into the format and climbing up the ranks become much more difficult, you do tend to see a bit higher win percentage among the top 25. As for playstyle, almost 60% of the decks by our top players involved a combo deck, such as Prank Kids, Virtual World, or Phantom Knights, while 23% involved a mid-range deck like Dogmatica Invoked or Sword Soul. Some control decks at 14% like El Lich and Sky Striker, and finally the small 4% of beatdown decks being solely from Dinosaurs. Last month, our top players won 73% of the matches, and we had a lot more mid-range decks being played among the top 25, primarily driven by the large number of Sword Soul that was being run. So let's cover the top 5 decks in more detail as usual, starting with Prank Kids with the new Brave Engine. This basically gives them an Omni Negate to help their first normal summon Prank Kid monster to resolve, although the large package does come at a bit of a cost in reducing the number of hand traps they can run for example. The top 25 players managed to win 74% of their matches though, which is impressive, and their win percentage did not matter by die roll because it was more or less the same. Among all players on Dueling Book, in the last 7 days it was the 3rd most played deck, and even among all players the deck won a blistering 64% of the matches, which is pretty crazy. While the limit of Mia Mia Mu really hurt, the Brave Token at least really helps the deck out now. Now for Sword Soul, another impressive win percentage at 75% among the top ranked players. The deck did lose Proto, so it doesn't have an auto win button against some decks anymore, but still a very strong deck since that's all that it lost. What's been impressive with Sword Soul among the meta analysis so far is that they have shown to have a strong win percentage whether they win the die roll or not at around 74 to 76%. The Tenny cards really helped them when going second, so it's a really balanced deck and tier 1 for a reason. Among all players, it was also the most played deck in the last 7 days with the 57% win percentage, which is pretty good as well. Next we have Eldritch, and this included pure Eldritch, but also Eldritch invoked as well. While we are dealing with small sample sizes here, the deck did win 78% of the matches among the top players, so that's the highest we have today. When they won the die roll, they won an amazing 83% of their matches, while still winning 71% of the matches when they lost the die roll. Skill Drain is certainly very strong, and while this deck has been rogue for a bit now, 
perhaps it is coming back to its tier 1 glory. Among all players, if you add up every Eldritch variant, then in the last 7 days it was actually the second most played with a solid 56 win percentage as well. Next we have Virtual World which also benefits from the Brave Engine but with Fairytale Snow coming back to 1, they can also foolish that through Beatrice and have another interruption. The top players won 73% of their matches with this deck and we are seeing some funky numbers here by the die roll presumably because of the really small sample size. Among all players, Virtual World is another popular deck with Sword Soul Virtual World also being a thing and so it was the 5th most played deck with a solid 56 win percentage. Lastly, we have Phantom Knight, which as I said earlier, thought would be way more common among the top ranked players because everyone expected this to be the best deck after the ban list was released. This may still be the case and maybe in next month's meta analysis, this will reach number 1. Anyways, the top players won 70% of their matches with the deck without much difference in win percentage based on die roll. Now among all players, this is a bit tricky because YGO Scope doesn't actually show Phantom Knight but rather as Burning Abyss. Another issue is that YGO Scope has a deck called Just Hero, but this represents a variety of decks that run the DPE package, which includes Phantom Knight. So the deck is most likely more common than 6th most played, but with what we know, the deck won 55% of its matches among all players. Alright guys, so that was it for this month's meta analysis, post list, and grand creators. Hope that was helpful. I'm looking into creating a tier list based on a formula so I can score decks consistently, so look out for that video. Take care guys.